Ah, g'day there. Do you like a good mystery? Me too. Love uh, Sherlock Holmes. Um, the books are good, but I love the performance of Basil Rathbone as the great detective. Not so much in the films, but the old radio plays. They made them for years and years and years. They're great. And I don't know, through the books and the films and the radio plays, I try to have a deductive mind. And there's a case that Sherlock Holmes would have really sunk his teeth into. The Vanishing of Marion Barter. I made a little animation about it a while ago now, back when the podcast The Lady Vanishes about uh, Marion was brand new. Let's have a look at it now to fill you in on what we knew from the start. I'll be there. Recently, I've been listening to a new podcast called The Lady Vanishes. It's riveting and a good old Agatha Christie type mystery. Here's the true crime story so far summarized in my badly drawn way. 1997. Marion Barter's daughter Sally was at this Macca's servo having tea with her future husband when she noticed her mum's car pull up at the petrol pump. Marion Barter was with a tall, strange man and when she noticed her daughter had spotted her, Marion drove away fast. Later, claiming that the passenger was just a friend, Marion then went on a holiday to England, sending Sally postcards from the likes of historic Tonbridge Castle and Sally's craft shop in Alfriston. Marion also had plans to travel on the exotic Orient Express, a locomotive that conjures up mystery and suspense in its own right. But it seems in Letters Home, she postponed or even canceled that excursion. As the months went by, Sally, back in Australia, became worried that she hadn't heard any more from her mum and called the Commonwealth Bank to see if there was any activity on Marion's account. There had been. Despite being on holidays in England, someone had been withdrawing $5,000 every day for the past three weeks at the Byron Bay branch in Australia. Sally rang the police and they told her Marion's passport had re-entered Australia. After further investigations, it was revealed that Marion Barter had changed her name to Flora Bella Natalia Marion Remichel before leaving on her trip overseas. And that the person who re-entered Australia on Marion's passport had filled out the customs form saying she was a married housewife from Luxembourg. And 22 years later, Marion hasn't been heard from again. My heart goes out to Marion's daughter Sally, who just doesn't know what happened to her mother. It's a good podcast, The Lady Vanishes, and I really recommend it. There's even more twists and turns and nooks and crannies and diving down the rabbit hole than I've been able to articulate in this short um, video. So yeah, I just listened to the last episode of The Lady Vanishes, a great podcast hosted by Alison and Brian. It really brought light to things and made things happen. We've just had a coronial inquest where the findings were just made public. Um, there's been so many developments since that poorly drawn animation that I made. First of all, they've found their man, or we think so. Um, there was a listener to the podcast who found an old French newspaper from 1994 that had a personal ad in it 
from a man named Remikul, the same name that Marion changed her name to on her passport. Coincidence? There was a phone number attached to that name. Um, police found it listed on another business for a different gentleman. This guy is named Rick Bloom, and he's had so many aliases and different names and run-ins with women that shadow Marion's case so closely. All were um, victims of him in some way, mostly financial. He would steal their money, possessions. It's riveting. Um, the best way to do it at this point is to go back to the Lady Vanishes uh, catch-up series where you just start from catch up one and they'll condense everything down all the twists and turns um but anyway to the findings um the coroner says marion barter is presumed dead now so that's good some closure there but no charges have been laid against rick bloom or remical um mr remical isn't his real name obviously he identity theft someone in Luxembourg and that's where that name comes from that's why it's so unique also that's how we found him because it is so unique especially in Australia that the listener found it in that old French newspaper ad there in the ad he's described as tall just as Sally had seen at the McDonald's in her mum's car a tall unknown man so, some closure. We still don't know where Marion is. Uh, there's no justice. Although, he seems like an elderly man now. Not in the best of health. So, at least there's that. And now people are listening. I think the police really failed Sally, Marion's daughter. They could have in inquired at so many different points in this case. They could have checked with Sydney Airport footage of Marion returning to Australia to see if it was really her, who she was with. They could have contacted the Orient Express to see a passenger list and rule out or rule in that possibility. Where was she? Was she really in Tunbridge Wells when she called Sally? So there's still a lot of mysterious parts of this, but it's bound to happen when you don't try and solve a case straight away. Decades have gone by, 27 years. So at least we have some closure. I know that's a terrible word. My heart goes out to Sally and her family. Marion deserved better. And a well done on the Lady Vanishes podcast. Sad to see it come to an end, but all good things don't last forever. Like this very video.